of that and we're recording and julie is back i'm back Yay. this week Yay. Yay. but amanda always does a great job i was just telling oh, everybody yeah. in the green room and for those of us that are i don't know if anybody's with us yet live on facebook or not but i missed you all so much last week that i listened to the replay on the way home from the events that i was at and it sounded so good. I was like, <laughs> you, you're, you act surprised. Why? <laughs> of course it sounded good. It was on last week. I thought I was on last week. Because <laughs> I wasn't watching it visually. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh. So I was just listening to it like a podcast sort of yeah. thing. And so it was just like, and I was completely there. I was just like, oh, this, oh yeah, that one sounds good. And because you were all talking about, um, oh, I even wrote some stuff down because I think that, uh, well, okay. I'm the last Rose. thing. Oh. Well, I'm going to tell you because I was with Ellen Hildebrand all day and you talked about her book Endless Summer. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's brilliant. The Endless Summer is a, a, either it's an extended chapter, a pre-chapter, it's something from all eight of her, uh, from eight of her novels. She has like 20, 30 some novels, oh. but it's all from eight of them. So if you like the short story that you read, you go buy the novel. <laughs> I was like, already out there and has been out there for years. Oh, that's and I was like, genius. So I that's love how you I sell was, backlist. I like, <laughs> right? I was just like, and there's not very, very many authors that could do it, but somebody like a Jody Picot could probably do it. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, there's, there's plenty there's, of authors. There's plenty, plenty of, of authors. Like a, a Robert Craze oh. could do it. I mean, there yeah. are some authors that could do this because I, when she said that, I was like, that's genius. I was just like so when so as I was driving home, I was just like, oh, I wish this was live because I'd like pop in and say that. <laughs> that was pretty fun. So, anyways, but yes, I missed you all last week, but we've got another great week of releases this week. Can't wait to see what you all have. Um, and I might have one or two to talk about that I didn't get to talk about before. So what's gonna go, Tom, Gabe, and Amanda. So Tom, take it away. Okay. Well, this would maybe this wouldn't work as well on a, a podcast because it's visual thinking <laughs> uh, by Temple Grandin. So um, subtitle is The Hidden Gifts of People Who Think in Pictures, Patterns and Abstractions. And it's Temple Grandin is a star. She's a big name. And first time we published her, but I think she has something like 18 books. And this is the follow up to it's been over over 25 years since her most famous book, Thinking in Pictures. This is uh, her follow-up to that. So it's the next, I, I don't know if she's had big, bigger books in between or, or not, but this is one of her major, major works. So she is, um, she's the, she, you know, thinking in pictures, but it helped establish like a whole new way of thinking about neurodiversity, autism in particular. Um, and so she's following that. Now this, this follows in that same tradition. There's, there's a lot of personal stuff in here, but it's also a lot of the latest uh, thinking, the latest science, um, using examples of famous people like Steve Jobs, who were visual thinkers. There, there's a lot of stories, you know, anecdotes about people like that who have succeeded in this, these extraordinary ways. Um, and it's, it's a book that could be used by, um, in all different kinds of ways. You don't have to be a visual thinker, but most of us have visual thinkers in our lives that we, we think would help. This, would, this book would help us understand those people in our lives even better. Um, so she's kind of a national treasure. She's been doing a lot of interviews. She was on NPR over the weekend. Um, and, and of course, uh, animal, her real uh, love is animal behavior. That's what she studies. And so she even brings that into the book um, because animals are certainly visual thinkers. Um, so anyway, really exciting book for the fall, Visual Thinking by Temple Grandin. Yeah, and we've actually hosted her a couple of times. She's amazing. Oh, have you? Yeah, this is back. It's been years now, though. Um, right. Oh, I bet she's incredible in person. Yeah, yeah. So pretty. She's a pretty incredible person. Yeah. So yeah. And people who like, she's so inspirational for everybody. So if you have a chance, if if there's an event that's happening somewhere in your neck of the woods, wherever you're watching this from, um, go out and see her. Oh, that's great to hear. Because I, I don't, I don't know all of the stops she's making, but I know she's doing some, some uh, in-person yeah. appearances. Yeah, I mean, and we so had a president who was a visual thinker. You know, fifth, ten-year-old vocabulary, but he visually show him graphs and stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's how he learned. So, right. and be president of the U.S. and be a visual learner. There you go. 
All right, Gabe, what do you have for us? Speaking of neurodiversity. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Well, <laughs> Amanda's in the background. <laughs> no, I mean, that's that's how he absorbed information. I was a, uh, you, that's how he absorbed information. It's, he yeah. wasn't a reader, but he, he likes graphs and we all see different. Uh, I am going to speak about the book that won the Prix Goncourt Lycée Ooh, in Say that France. again. Say that uh, again. The Impatient by Jali Amadou Amal. And this is, um, so it, it also won the Orange Prize for Africa. So the Orange Prize is the new woman's prize mm -hmm. that used to be the Orange Prize. Mm -hmm. um, and so they have one, uh, the Orange Prize for Africa is a book written by a, an African writer in French, but published by a, um, an African publisher. So it's kind of cool. And then when it was published, it won the Prix Goncourt Lycée, which is essentially, I think, a high schoolers um, pick a book and, uh, uh, or it's an award that's given and I, somehow it's picked by the students or the students all read it, but it's sold something like 200,000 copies in France. It's a slight volume and it's a story of three women who are um, just stuck in their fate. You know, they are women who are from Cameroon and the culture uh, that they live in is you're going to reach a certain age. There's going to be a man assigned to you. It's all very, you know, wow. Wow. Uh, very clinical and very uh, no nonsense. And this is your man. You, that's who you go. And that's your life. And, you know, vaya con Dios, be a good wife. And um, it is obviously times are changing. We're seeing what's going on in the Middle East, in Iraq. Um, and uh, it is a look at how these three women uh, come together and, and you know, affect each other's lives in the growth uh, of their lives and the growth of the vision of, a, of the life that they want. You know, it's, and it's not a matter. She's, it's a really poignant book in that um, there's a lot of acceptance. And that's just the way it is for most people. And mm. then a few people dare to stand up and stand out. And you're seeing as an, an anomaly, uh, even though it's the best thing for you. So brilliant, short novel, um, really good review attention. I think it's going to come for this thing. And I am really excited. It comes from Harper Via, which is our books in translation imprint. Um, and I keep you know, bringing up their books. There's just some really, really good publishing going on there. Yeah, it sounds like you've got some really good books in that, in that imprint. Um, love the cover. Yeah. The cover is pretty amazing. Um, but yeah, that's the thing is that, like you said, what's going on in Iran right now, it's just, it's, you live with something for so long and you kind of accept it until you don't anymore, you know? And then right. it's just like, and then it's like, okay, something's got to yeah. happen. You don't so. have to be chattel. Right. You know, right. You're done. Yeah. Very good. All right, Amanda B. Alrighty, so my first title I have for you today is a brand new David Baldacci. Always a fun day when we have a new David Baldacci. Um, so for this book, uh, we have Amos Decker. He's uh, been called out to investigate um, what he thinks is a pretty straightforward um, murder. A federal judge and her bodyguard have been found dead. The judge's uh, face is blindfolded with two with her two eyes cut out, um, you know, obviously she made some enemies. Um, but at first, you know, it does seem cut and dry, but then things always never seem what they are. So he's got to figure out who could have done it. Is it the violent gang members, drug dealers, smugglers, her ex-husband? Um, and why is the bodyguard dead too? What happened there? Is the bodyguard involved somehow? Um, so there you go. David Baldacci's uh, newest book, Long Shadows, out tomorrow. Always good when a David Baldacci book is out. I just saw his, uh, uh, the movie that they made of, I guess, probably his first book, The Absolute Power. I think it's a Clint Eastwood oh, movie. It is. It's one of those movies I watch like Marathon Man or The Fugitive every couple, three years. I'll just right. turn it on because it's Yeah, because it's like if you're flipping through and you see I it. don't think I've seen that. I, I, it's worth, okay. worth a look, I guess. You know, it's just suspense, smart little suspense yeah. novel, Gene Hagman. Yeah, uh, Clint Eastwood. Uh, what's her name? Laura Linney. Yeah, got a good cast. It does a really good cast. 
and it does. And I think it holds up because I do. Yeah, I'm, the same way, I'm the same way, Gabe. I watch that and Absolute Power. What's the one where he's <coughs> on the airplane? It's not a Baldacci movie, though. What's the um, airplane one? Air Force One? Is that one? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, or yeah. that's on, and it's not close to it. It's, um, no, it's Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. Yeah. I, was I love watching those every once in a while. What's the one where Clint Eastwood's in the closet? Is that that's Absolute Power? Okay, that's yeah. the Absolute Power one. Yeah, he yeah. watches the murder. I definitely yeah. have yeah. seen that. Oh, it's so good. It's good. But you mentioned Marathon Man. I mean, I haven't seen that for 20 oh. years at least, but I love, I love that movie. Such a good movie. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. All right, Tom. Okay. Next on so you. My next book is, uh, I'm not really, I, I haven't said his name before, but it's, it's his name. It's a philosopher at MIT, Kieran Satia. Okay, there we go. Life is hard. And who could, who could disagree, I think? Uh, the subtitle is How Philosophy Can Help Us Find Our Way. And you can see it's a slim book, which is very approachable. So even though he's yeah, this high profile philosopher at MIT, he's got a real light touch that for those, for people like me who you know, have never dug very deep into philosophy, it's very accessible. Um, he's a really, it's a really intelligent uh, guide to life's challenges. Um, he has a sense of humor. And also I love that he brings in uh, art and literature um, references that, that I can really relate to. Um, you know, uh, a, lot, a lot of Iris Murdoch in here and she was both a novelist and a philosopher. Um, and so he tackles, uh, there's short chapters, there's infirmity, loneliness, grief, failure, injustice, absurdity, and thankfully chapter seven, hope. <laughs> hope uh, because you know we you were dealing at a time with so many things that could leave us hopeless but he's it's the book is is about how you know you know how we get through the how using philosophy can help us get through these times um, that we all have at any point in our lives we're dealing with some of these things so I love it's getting great great reviews it's just been as a hardcover just been out of, about a week or so um, life is hard well and, and I think that from it, Riverhead I, too is that river Yeah. Because I think that it's, you know, what I'm finding is um, the last couple of years was a lot harder on people than I think everybody's really like. Yeah. Willing to, like, willing, willing to admit. To admit. Yeah. yeah. Or, to, or to even, even to identify. You know I don't think yeah. they've identified it. They just feel a malaise, you know, right. yeah. a depression. So, right. and I mean, I, and especially like young people and not super young, but like, that 25 to 35 year old, if you're not in a relationship and there, I, I hear so many kids of that age that are just like, just having a really hard time. And I think right. that- it, Yeah, a book like philosophy, this. Yeah. Yeah, is sort of a, it, I've been reading it in little, just chunks and it is it's so smart and very reassuring, but you're right. I mean, I think the time, this is the perfect time for a book like this. Right, because I just think that it's, um, because some of us, older folks where's the grace have this sort of mentality like, just get over it you know yeah. just like oh just like you know deal with it or whatever and it's just like <laughs> mm, i think this is one that's right i think it may take a little more than just uh deal with it kind of it's thing. a good thing my daughter isn't on today my 20 almost 21 year old daughter she would have a few things to say about how maybe i said a few things like that that maybe didn't work <laughs> Did, for her. didn't go over real well no. No, I know. <laughs> Although but, I do have to say with that age group comments does. by parents, though, let's be honest, we're kind of like, eh. Well, but I mean, <laughs> but I think that what's happening with that generation too a little bit, and I think it's great, is they're setting their boundaries better now too, though. They're much more um, in tune with, mm, you know, when we say stuff like that, they call us out on it. Yeah, that's know? probably right too, yeah. Which yeah. is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. Yeah. It's a different time. I mean, honestly, I you know it's, yeah. it's tough on the kids, the younger kids. It really is. Just looking at how you're going to buy a home. I was doing math, and it's just like how with do some you do of it? these kids. It's tough. Never going to happen. It's yeah. tough, you know. Yeah. And it keeps going up. Now the houses are going down a bit, but the interest rates are back up. And then right. I want to yeah. get a cheeseburger, but there's no help at the restaurant. You go it's, to the car wash. We're all affected. I mean, yeah, it's just it's really a little, very indignities you go to a hotel you can't get service in a hotel because there are not that many people who necessarily i don't know it's yeah, everywhere it's, you go i think uh every industry is suffering every uh, uh from top to bottom yeah i think it's, and figuring it out i think a lot of the younger kids are really maybe too far in my opinion about sending their boundaries 
because <laughs> they might gotta get back. Burnt. It'll come back. Yeah, yeah I will. mean, you gotta get you gotta get burned. I mean, I don't want people to suffer, but I know. I learned. You know, I told you not to touch the stove. Touch the stove, then. You know. <laughs> yeah. That's how yeah. you learn. That's how you Something. learn. Something. Yeah. But you know, we've also got advantages. Our kids, you know, that a lot of people don't have. Uh, raising our kids yeah, that correct. we have and we take for granted that they see you know but they don't have their future when i grew up my future was limitless correct you know we could i could be anything i really could i could buy a big house i could live near whatever all those things that you and that's that's not a vision that these kids have it's like well how no. am i gonna pay my next month's rent right it seems to be much more um the the gaps are much wider on yeah. attaining those and there are there are a lot of young couples that are making three hundred fifty, four hundred thousand dollars a still, year as well, and still yeah. aren't able to afford. To, yeah, well, the, and and of course, this book deals with the, like, how do you um, have hope when all those things, also global warming. We're watching the world change, and will we be extinct? You know, will we? Be, right. So it's the, but but finding a way through that and still living a meaningful life. That's what. We need books like this. I love that. Love that. Okay, um, Kim, you asked about who recommended um, Shrines of Gaiety. That was Steve um, Atinsky oh, yeah. last week. Um, and that's on my list too. I was listening to that and I was like, oh, that's on my list too. I know, it's on my list also. Um, okay, um, Gabe, you're up. Oh. Uh, I'm just going to make a quick Wait. announcement. Peter Wait, Robinson. what does it mean? Amanda wants to say something. No, aren't I next? Your last. Oh, your last, baby. Oh, did we not do a full rotation? I missed it. I thought we did a full rotation already, and it was my turn. We just were gabbing too much. Gabe, Gabe, would, Gabe, would, Gabe, would, Gabe would prefer if you were if you were next, but you're not next. <laughs> you're not I'm next. way lost already. How did I, I love, get lost? I love Amanda. Like, oh, oh, wait. wait well, and I, and I, before you start, Gabe, I just want to say that this is very sad news. And when I saw the news, the first person I thought of was you. So it's just about it, you know after years and decades of hearing you talk about Peter Robinson and his books. So he passed away this weekend at 72 wow. and uh, really a terrific writer. And I just wanted to pop up in uh, memoriam to Peter. There's a couple of things that he's written, but start within a dry season, work your way around. I never wrote a bad book, um, but it's very sad. Uh, we worked together for 23 years and he used to come out. I used to, we just had a lot of, a lot of meals and a lot of dinners and a lot of whiskey together. Um, and 23 years, a long time to know somebody. Yeah, that's too bad. Yeah. So another uh, family uh, domestic interesting uh, novel, Daughters of the New Year by E.M. Tran. So here we have a Vietnamese family. Uh, but It's set in uh, New Orleans. It's set in Louisiana. Um, Remember Robert Olin Buster's uh, first or big uh, National Book Award winner or one of those, he won one of the big awards uh, for a strong scent from a cold mountain or something. <laughs> I forget the title. I me too. I, I remember scent was in it, but. Uh... Scent and Mountain. Yeah. Um, but uh, a, a lot of Vietnamese settled uh, in, in my neighborhood in Northeast LA and in Louisiana parishes. Uh, and they've thrived there. And it is a really um, uh, another, you know, interesting novel look at a, at a history of the women of the family and the uh, zodiac um, sign that is attached to the family. And it makes for some really interesting reading. It's not a particularly fat novel. It's a really quick read, uh, but it really offers some insights into this uh, uh, family history and then that's what it is I call it a domestic it's more of a family history and the chronicling um, and and um, you know uh, discovering uh, realities of your life and family secrets that at, in some cases seem really really like I Dios me you can't you know but sometimes might not be that big a deal and other things uh, other secrets that are really secret and uh, and have affected the family in many ways uh, with fallout, et cetera. So it's, it's a really um, uh, quick read. It's a really, I just find it really interesting looking at this family of, again, uh, family history of women, of the women in the family primarily, 
uh, and the way she brings the, the generations across and the way she merges her narrative uh, was just a lot of fun and very easy to read. So uh, one of these books that I'm recommending, I uh, got a great quote from the Seattle Times um, on, uh, on here. Um, and that is Daughters of the New Year. Sounds good. Is it regular size, like 320 page kind of novel? It's a little yeah. short, shorter than that. A little shorter than that, yeah. yeah. But it sounds really good. I just read another story, Vietnamese story, um, Wandering Souls, I think. Really interesting. Same thing though, with like the topic is really interesting and how and women, what women's role is in Vietnamese culture and stuff. It's really good. Looks like a good one. Okay, Amanda. Now me? Now you. Now okay. you get to talk. Yay! I got lost. Okay. Um, so changing it up a little bit this time for two of my uh my picks here. Um, so Rick Steves, um, who I love, I do love watching uh, Rick Steves shows myself. Um, he's got two new travel guides coming out tomorrow. Uh, his big honking guides to Spain and France tomorrow. Um, these have been completely revised and updated um, for the post-COVID travel world. Uh, people are beginning to start traveling a little bit more. Um, so it's nice to have some fresh guides. And of course, Rick Steves does it the best. Um, love his guides. Love him. Um, he works with a ton of local people when he does his tours. Um, so he really knows the ins and outs of every country that he talks about. Um, so I'm just happy to see um, some fresh updated guides um, so there you go. Ready to start planning your trip. Grab your Spain and or France um, and head on out um, to see the world again. So there you go. Rick Steve's new books. Um, and he's got a ton of new guides coming out um, over the next couple of months. Again, completely revised and updated. And he's in Europe right now working hard on those books to make sure that they're updated for everybody. So and a new show coming out. Working hard. Oh. Come on now. <laughs> working hard. I'm not sure Rick Steves works that hard. <laughs> crossing those time zones is exhausting. Can be. He's got to walk and talk a lot. Nothing, nothing yeah, he better does. than Sunday afternoon, PBS, watching Rick Steves, wherever he's at in the world. Having a glass of wine in some <laughs> oceanfront restaurant. In Italy. Right. No, Croatia. he does. I do love his. I love his. I who does what I do. Right. Yeah, what I do appreciate is he does really cover a lot of the history of stuff. Like when he gives you, you know, when you watch his show. So I guess he is working. And it's there. His guides are really useful. Yeah. I mean, They're they great. really. He knows what he's doing too, and and it's reassuring that. I've seen lots of people. I know lots of people who are in Europe right this second. My and daughter, one of them, she's in really, Spain, which I'm completely why are the, jealous. Why are the four of us here? Is what I want to know. But right? We no, should do tea but, time from a far off destination next time. Oh, That's destination right. tea But time. it's good yes. to hear if Rick if Rick Steves is updating all of his guides. That's a sign that we're on our way out of this thing. That's I think my, so too. I think so too. Yeah. No, my daughter might. We're part of half of my culture is Basque. So she started oh. in Madrid and she's making her way up um, to the Basque country. So We're that's too long. Are you guys? How did we, we not know this? How can it be? That's where our be? name comes from. Yeah. Okay. My mother's um, maiden name was Ituri and her mother's was Chinchareta. So where are you? On, so what province were you from? Do you know? That I don't know. Okay. There's a lot of. There's like seven provinces. Yeah. A lot of yeah. lost in There's a lot of, a lot of no, they, nothing in between. Yeah. Where they migrated from Basque to Guatemala. Got it. It's, um, yeah, so so my grandfather's farmhouse where he lived was actually, because you know the whole, the famous Picasso painting of the Tree of Guernica. Oh, yeah. um, so my, my grandfather, he lost a brother to win because Hitler used Guernica as kind of a, um, a place where he... Um, it was testing like test, ground. testing ground and um there's still bullet holes in the in the farmhouse and he, his brother par his brother was killed by the hitler's um army there oh, so wow. it was um yeah anyways how long is she there she is there for like 11 days i think so she started in madrid she's in segovia right now and she's heading on her way to bilbao and then she'll head to san sebastian and um yeah jealous super jealous because the weather looks beautiful and it just is like why am i yeah as i'm like laying there today like 
figuring out what I'm doing. And she's like, sending Hello, me I've pictures. heard lots of, you know, I've seen lots of people there, but also I have heard a story. I won't name the person, but someone who works at PRH, I heard that they were stuck in Lisbon because of contracting COVID. Oh, oh. So, that's there's that to get to that's still there's there a, they're but. still there it's still there but i was watching the thing where people were showing the co2 like there's this new thing i guess where you show the co2 levels on the plane to show uh, how bad uh, the circulation is oh, on, no. air, on airplanes and, oh yeah it's this whole thing that's on twitter and tick all over the place and just like because they say oh the air circulation is great on planes don't worry about it oh no it's awful it's like you're, you're almost kidding. getting co2 poisoning it's uh, it's not bad <laughs> Don't drink the water. Don't breathe the air on it. I bring my own. I bring my own oxygen little tank with me next time. That's exactly. Right. No, they were my so little I, over my mask. There you go. Right. My little oxygen. Once you're mask. in the air and you're flying, it's fine. But when you're on the ground and taxiing and sitting on the gate, it's horrible. It's, it's horrible. I mean, you can smell the fumes coming in too. Correct. Right? Yeah. It's also so, like so you're you know, basically being poisoned while you're carbon sitting. Carbon monoxide. <laughs> Okay, we digress completely on that yeah, one. Yeah, we do. So, um, so let's go to um, lightning round, Tom. Okay, lightning round. So this kind of fits in with what we were talking about before and younger people, and this couldn't be timed any better. So Annie Duke, um, author of the most recent, I guess we think we've done a couple of other books, books but Thinking in Bets was her most, most successful book. So Quit, The Power of Knowing When to Walk Away is her brand new book out in hardcover. Um, so she's most famous, I think, as a um, poker, professional poker player. So, of course, you know, that knowing when to quit in, in that kind of uh, sport is is essential. And so and she's going against the grain, which is what I do like. It's like instead of you can do it, like stick to it, you know, that kind of self-help that we're so used to. Hers is like, no, sometimes if you, you just have to you have to be smart about it and you have to know when, the, when it's the right time. But she's given you lots of uh, ways to think, ways to rethink your, all of our different situations. And sometimes success comes from the quitting. So um, and I think I, I, I don't know how much of a presence she is in San Diego, but her father is Richard Letterer, who oh, yes. lives, lives yes in san diego i think yeah, it has yeah, for a yeah, long yeah. time i don't think yeah. she's from i looked her up she's not they weren't originally from san diego he must Got have it. moved there later but um but anyway there's a little bit of a san diego connection but um power of knowing when to walk away quit by annie duke love it he does it's, those word books and stuff yeah like yeah that. he does the word books right yeah. he had a column i think at the in the union tribune union for years too. that's right yeah um but it's it, so it's like quitting because I because all we talk about around here is the quiet quitting, the whole yeah. trend of quiet quitting. Right. It's like right. I may be loud quitting on these <laughs> I'm not going out quietly when I quit. Yeah, that's right. When you quit, <laughs> well, all everyone will know. Everybody's going <laughs> I always say if I ever win the lottery, I'm gonna quit in epic fashion. Right. <laughs> epic fashion. I oh, love it. Okay. Um, all right, Gabe. Um, I love my job, so I'll never quit. Even if I, I love my job too, I'm not quitting. Same anymore. here. I'm just. I love what I do. Yeah, right. I my do. yacht will be calling to me. <laughs> I'm gonna be that dude. Wrong <laughs> one. Sorry. That's all right. I'd be okay if you won the lottery and quit epically. They, you know, they treated me very nicely at Harper's. Been a good place to be for 35 years. Wow. Before high school, I started. So uh, I get a call yesterday. Why don't I have this book? <laughs> from Warwick's? No, from my wife. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I quickly had to order a copy um, for my own benefit. I'm going to be honest. Um, so exactly. say we baking. I, you know what? My wife, Deborah's baked, started baking. Uh, soon after we met and um she accuses me of like bringing cookbooks home baking books home and uh <laughs> being sneaky about it but i never was like that but uh, now so she started baking and a lot of cakes and a lot of decoration and she really got into it uh but recently she started making bread and of course everybody she started with the uh, like everybody else with the uh, sourdough starter during the pandemic and that lasted about two weeks or three days uh, <laughs> 
is but she she's... watching is she watching right now <laughs> <laughs> she's in the other room and i got the door closed but um but she started making bread and stuff so uh and she you know done these big focaccias and all decorated and she does the uh, sourdoughs and she's been doing all kinds of different you know just some like jalapeno and cheese bread and stuff so yeah it's a it's a good thing fresh bread it's a really nice luxury. I never thought it's like, man, good butter and some fresh bread. Mm -mm. So good. So here we have um, all sorts of savory baking loveliness from, uh, you know, flatbreads and pizzas to uh, biscuits and the cheese biscuits look a bomb. Chicken and waffles is in here. Um, uh, bagels, uh, tarts of all sorts. Uh, the, big structural things and whatever. So um, I'm recommending, got a great quote from Rose Levy um, and uh, uh, Rose Levy Berenbaum. And I uh, can't say enough about this nice, big, all encompassing book. Cause it's kind of broad where a lot of them sort of focus on lamination. Some focus on only bread. Uh, this, like I said, you know, it's, it's from uh, tarts and uh, smaller things to bigger things and one dish meals and things. Very Looks cool looks really good. I, I was diagnosed as a diabetic last December because I used to love to bake. I mean, I bake every weekend. I was either doing a cobbler, I was doing breads, I was doing, and not being able to eat carbs very much is like really sucks about, <laughs> it sucks like so That's hard. Fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Love carbs. <laughs> Love carbs. I heard a doctor one time with, with my mom, one of my, one of my parents in the hospital, the guy's talking to the woman and she said, well, I just have toast for breakfast. And he's telling her, you know, toast is the same as cake for you. You're a diabetic. It's a, and I'm like, I'm done having toast, man. I'm just a cake guy from now on. <laughs> <laughs> you know what cake? never gets recalled? Cake. 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 It's Cake just, it's never true. gets recalled. So it's just, it's so, and I just, I just, cause I would like find recipes and do Pinterest and do all that stuff with different recipes that I try. And I would, I had so much fun. I used to bring them into Warwick's all the time. I mean, I would, because it was just my husband and I. Only so so I much mean, you can eat. Yeah, yeah. And Gerard, Gerard, who's up at, he's up at Auntie's now up in Spokane. But I mean, he loved, I used to just like, Julie, when are you bringing something in? <laughs> So um, Amanda's on here talking about Deborah uh, Gabe. Um, she makes works of art is how she yeah, puts she it. She's done some nice things. Yeah. 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 Uh, so I knew Amanda's complimenting me on being, a, yeah, I love to bake. It's kind of a drag, but I did just finally, I, I got like the best chocolate because I can eat chocolate mm -hmm. if it's like, just like 90% chocolate. Darker chocolate. <laughs> like the stuff that yeah, makes well. really good. Okay, but, that's a good place. I love some good chocolate. I know, so there you go. All right, um, Arlene, I'm going to get to your note after Amanda goes. So Amanda, why don't you do yours? And I will see what um, Arlene's doing on Facebook here. So I want to say I have the America's Touch and Chocolate cookbook, baking book, just for mm. me. Yes. Love it because it's all chocolate. And it's, and I use dark chocolate for everything, regardless of what they say. I just use dark chocolate because right. I prefer dark to a milk chocolate. So I like me a good milk chocolate every once in a while. Okay, so I have Witch Hazel by Molly Idol. Um, coming up, and this is a gorgeous picture book. Um, if this will go forward, or, oh, there we go. Okay, um, and so it is. A, it is the witch Hazel and her granddaughter. Um, and as you can see, Hazel's got a little bit of magic that she uses uh, to kind of create little things from the dust. Um, and it's just a really beautiful, charming story about a grandmother and her granddaughter, and just the time they spend together, the memories they create. Um, you will cry at the end of this book. I know I did. Um, and just coupled with these gorgeous illustrations. I mean, just oh, absolutely stunning. And you can never go wrong with a Molly Idol book. Uh, she's a fabulous illustrator. Um, and so there you go. We have the witch, uh, witch hazel. Those are great illustrations. Oh, great illustrations. Stunning. Really stunning good illustrations. illustrations. I was like, oh, woohoo, when I saw it. It's a little different than what she normally does. Uh, with the two-tone but oh it is absolutely exquisite love it. love it so arlene's on here thank you arlene we hosted um linda loigman last week for it's not one of your books it's the mcmillan book um the matchmaker's gift it was such a good conversation so if anybody's looking for just and it was she wrote it sort of what we were talking about earlier 
during the pandemic when her 20 year old daughter and her daughter's roommate came home and sort of the same thing about not finding love and, you know, having a hard time dating and doing this. And turns out that one of her, that her daughter's friend's grandmother was like a matchmaker back in like the early part of like the forties or fifties or something. And so it's really a good, it's a really good feel good kind of book. So um, thanks novel. Arlene. Thanks for watching. Is it a What's novel? Or- it's a novel. Yeah. It's a novel. It's called The Matchmaker's Gift. And it's yeah. just, and she does, she does two different time periods. She does, I think like the late 1800s and the, or the, what's the late 18, I can't remember the two time periods. Anyway, so the nine, she's in the nineties and she's in, no, maybe it's the twenties, twenties or thirties. I don't know, somewhere around it, but it's real. it's really good. It's just a really good, um, just a feel good kind of book. Yeah, good. I need those. Um, Tom, speaking of, I read The Last Unicorn. Oh, I saw that you, I thought you were reading it. And yeah, I, I liked it. It's, it's really 1910s. Okay. Thanks, Arlene. The, the early 1910s is what, the, is what it is. Um, I liked it. It was really, I mean, it's, it reminded me of who, do any of you guys have the Naomi Novak books? No, I think that's uh, is that random, Wade? Random, it's Wade. Yeah, Wade. Okay. Random. Wade. Yeah. yeah. Kind of reminded me of that in a way. Um, yeah. it was good. It was just oh, but, the right. And, yeah. And you like fantasy, but you're not totally into fantasy. Correct. Correct. So, so I like a little bit. Of, so a lot of different readers could probably. Relate. Yes. Yes. And oh, it, it is. Um, it was really good. I really like I, lo- it. I love unearthing a book from 1968, I think 68 or something. Yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> oh, you should have seen the comments I got. I mean, everybody's like, that was my favorite book. You know. I know. I know. Modern oh, classic. It is. All right, everybody. Another great week of of recommends. We're heading into the fall. We're getting oh, yeah. we're smack we're fall. smack dab in the middle of it now. So I'm not hearing as much about having um issues this year with shipping and stuff. Are we? Are I we gonna have them? Are we gonna? Oh, Gabe has. Oh, Gabe has. I think it, it hasn't uh, it hasn't gone to full. But we were you know our battle our first kind of big launch for the fall was immediately short. We yeah. got the Barbara King Solver coming out next week, the week after. Speaking of that, Barbara King Solver, we're part of that um, virtual event with her, so people can join in virtually um, with this us. This is a special book, I think, for Barbara. It's uh, up there with, I think, Poisonwood Bible. Ooh. Nice big epic, kind of very Dickensian. Uh, very cool. Who I've never really read, but I watched so- the movies. Just, you, mean, you gotta, you you gotta read at least one in your retirement. I've read, right? I've read a Christmas Carol, uh, <laughs> not for school. Picked it up on just my own for, at the library, just for pleasure. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I've never like I should read till two. Bleak, Bleak House is probably my favorite. Bleak House. Yeah. Bleak House is probably my favorite. All right, everybody, happy okay. reading. Um, I have to get to an event in a little bit. So, anyways, it's been it's been crazy on the events. So look at our website. We got lots of good. So we got a lot of good stuff virtually. So if you're watching this, we got a lot of good virtual stuff. Lee Child and his brother Andrew, um, Anthony Horowitz, uh, Barbara King Solver. We got some good virtual stuff happening. So check out our website. Anthony Horowitz coming to PBS, I think. I think. Magpie Murders. I think Magpie PBS. Murders. Yes. Yeah. So we've got we're involved in that virtual event too. So good way to locate all of them through Warwick's. Anyways. All right, everybody. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.